Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. Also hit the bell to be notified of our upcoming videos. This is a review of the Swiss Favre Luba Raider Harpoon 42. Finally, the Raider Harpoon that was previously in a larger 46 millimeter wide case is now in just a 42 millimeter wide case. It's still a big watch, still pretty thick. It still wears very aggressively and cool, but now in a 42 millimeter wide variant, um, it's actually wearable in wrists like mine. So I'll put it on really quick and you'll see how at 46 millimeters wide, you can imagine that'd be too big. And so it was happening in 46 millimeters, wasn't so much the width, but the length of the watch was extending past my wrist and it was just, it was just too much. So here at 42 millimeters wide, um, they definitely did a good job making it feel um, a lot more wearable for a lot more wrists. You can see even with those stubby lugs, the, the, the bracelet goes straight down almost. There isn't any overhang here. So again, this is a larger wearing 42 millimeters because of the broad lugs, but they're also stubby, which means that it's quite wearable. So what's going on with the Raider, Har Raider Harpoon? Um, I, when I reviewed this model last, it was several years ago, and what I have to say about it sort of remains. And before I talk about exactly what this watch does, let me just sort of explain uh, what's different between this model and the 46 millimeter. There's only two differences, and that is the smaller size and dimensions of the case overall, and the case water resistance went from 500 meters to 300 meters. I don't really think that's gonna matter to most people. People are gonna buy the one that goes ahead and fits their wrist best, but I think Favre Luba wanted to have some you know, modest technical difference between the two. So I'm gonna take the watch off for a second here and just show you exactly how uh, it works because if you just see this, it can be a little bit confusing to know um, exactly how to read the time. So the idea here is a little bit interesting. If you look at the dial, it'd be like, what's going on here? Well, you have to understand that this watch lacks an hour hand. It has an hour ring. So the hand goes from being uh, a hand to a ring and there is a minute hand and there's a seconds hand on the dial. So the very center hand, which is quite small, is the seconds hand. You can see it moving. But if you didn't know any better, you'd say, hey, is that is that like a little stubby hour hand? And it's not. And then you have the minute hand right here and you can see that the minute hand is between nine and 10, which means that's the current hour. So this would basically be about 9.44. And so I'll show you a little bit better here as I adjust the time, what goes on. So the minute hand follows the hour ring, but the hour ring moves at a different rate. So you can see how that works here. Now this is actually just as legible for the most part as your standard you know, two hand, three hand watch. The only difference is that on a standard watch, you tend to look at the hour hand first, and then you look at the minute hand second. So you read it hour minutes. Here, you actually have to look at the minute hand first, and then you look at the hour. So you would read this by minutes first, and then hours. So here, it would be about uh, 50, and almost supposed to be 1150 here, so you'd read it a little bit different. Not that big of a deal. Um, I suppose you could do it the other way around, but you still have to look at the minute hand first to see what hour position you need to look at. So no matter what, you're looking at the minute hand. Um, I felt that Favre Luba could have done a few more things from a design perspective to make it obvious that that ring is something that moves. Um, the ring is, however, produced out of a sort of solid piece of luminate material, so the night shot of this is quite nice. Um, but that is how you read the time, Raider Harpoon style. The movement to do that is the Favre Luva FL301, and that is a module that they put over a base uh, Salida SW200 automatic movement. So basically the same as an ETA 2024 with the special, special module on top, which creates that new time telling functionality. As a dive watch, you have a rotating bezel. It's kind of a thin one with a funky looking insert. This watch is very much inspired by some of the sports watches that Favre Luba produced in the 1960s and 1970s. From a sheer historic perspective, um, Favre Luba likes to call themselves the second oldest name in Swiss watchmaking because the, the name has been around that long. Um, I don't know what the oldest name is. Maybe Vacheron Constantine? I'm not exactly sure, but um, there's always this game. And these, these are watches that go back to the 18th century. That's where these names come from. If you notice here, 
on the watch. It's actually got a really cool case design. There's two different crowns. And this one up here, it says HE on there. That stands for helium, of course. That is a manual helium release valve. So if you're one of the very few people out there that dives really deep and you need to um, ascend and stay in a sort of uh, a decompression chamber, if you're one of the very few people on the planet that still do that, this is one of a few watches. But this one has a manual helium release valve. It's supposed to be an automatic one. So you have to remember to... Uh, open it up there in the chamber. Again, I'm speaking to like three people on the planet at this point. <laughs> so let's put this watch on one more time because I actually love how comfortable it is. Um, the bracelet is simple but wide, so it actually feels like a bigger watch because you can see how wide the bracelet is. Overall, I really think that Favre Luba did a good job. Definitely a niche timepiece, um, but it wears comfortably. It's got a great story behind it. Again, this is the Favre Luba Raider Harpoon Raider Harpoon 42. It comes in a few different dial colors, this blue one or an orange and black one. There's a version with a black case um, and there's a few different strap options to choose from. Price for this particular model is 3,950 Swiss francs and you can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thanks.